This is my buying guide part 2 and this time it's going to be about amplifiers. Well I'm not going to waffle about and I'd better start straight from the beginning. There are lots of different types of amplifiers you can choose from. Power amplifier, pre-amplifier, integrated amplifier, receiver and sort of special type called cassette receiver, cassiva for short. Power amplifier is a device that amplifies a signal, there's practically nothing more to it. The problem with power amps is that they can't control volume and usually have only one input and one output. There are of course some exceptions. If you've got only one source with volume control such as DAC, you can use power amp with no problem. If your source can't control volume or you've got more than one source, that's where a pre-amplifier comes in. Lots of power amplifiers are made as so-called monoblocks. Monoblock is a power amplifier that takes care of just one channel, thus monoblock. So if you want your system to play usual stereo, you need two of those. They tend to be more expensive than stereo power amps, and of course times two. Lots of stereo power amps can be switched to mono, which increases power and sometimes even quality. Generally, mono blocks should produce better sound than their stereo counterparts. Preamplifier takes care of the volume control, bass, treble, balance, and slight preamplification of a signal. Preamps also have additional inputs and outputs, so if you've got a power amp, you usually need a preamp which controls the volume for the power amp and has lots of inputs and outputs for different sources such as DAC, turntable, cassette DAC, etc. Preamps not always necessary if you don't need more than one input and if you've got a way to control the volume of your source. If you've got a turntable, you certainly need a preamp, or better yet, a damp. Turntables produce very weak signal and power amps are not cut out for it, so preamplifier preamplifying this weak signal and then power amp is able to amplify it properly. You can even get a separate phono preamp which could be a better choice for somebody who's obsessed with sound quality. They can get rather pricey though. Preamps can be quite cheap, but you can certainly find some ridiculously overpriced ones. If the preamp is crap, you'll get worse sound than from the power amp alone. If the preamp is good, you won't notice any difference in sound quality. And if the preamp is excellent, you will get much better sound, but that's gonna cost you. Integrated amplifier is essentially a power amplifier combined with a preamplifier. That means you've got a power amplifier with volume control and lots of inputs and outputs for connecting many different devices like cassette deck, turntable, tuner, etc. in one chassis instead of two. Integrated amps are generally inferior to power amps in terms of sound quality, since manufacturers have less space inside the chassis to work with and to sell power amps and preamps separately. They are also a lot cheaper. Receiver is a power amp, preamp and tuner in one chassis. Again, it's got one more device inside compared to an integrated amp, so the quality should be a tad worse compared to integrated. They are generally cheaper than integrated, but you can certainly find outstanding receivers some even outperforming integrated amps. And lastly, Cassiva. Cassiva is a receiver combined with a cassette player. As you may have guessed, the more stuff in the chassis, the less quality you get out of it. Cassivas are not the best choice if you care about the sound quality, unless you lack like space and you need just one device for whatever reason. Amplifiers are divided into classes, class A, class B, class AB, C, D, E, F, G, H, almost entire alphabet. Most commonly used today though are A, AB and D. Class A amplifiers are usually very expensive and are considered top of the line. They've got some advantages over other classes. Lower distortion, simpler design and generally better high frequency performance. On the flip side, bass performance is a bit worse compared to AB and they are also rather inefficient. They pretty much always use 100% of the power so it doesn't matter if they're in use or not, even if they're just turned on and don't produce any sound at all, they're running at full power and because of that their lifespan tends to be a bit shorter. And this is also a reason why the Class A amps can get very old. Class AB amps are a good compromise between efficiency, sound quality and price. They usually work in class A at lower volumes and switch to class B when necessary. Some class AB amps even sound better than some class A amps and bass response is usually better than that of class A. 
Class D amps are usually most powerful, very small, most efficient and thus produce very low heat. Compared to A or A B class, Class D amps sound generally colder, harsher and not very pleasing, at least to my ears. On the other hand, they tend to be quite resolving, so if you fancy lots of detail, Class D may be for you. This is yet another distinction that could affect what to choose. Valve amps, also called tube amps in the US, have been around for more than 100 years. The amps use valves to amplify the signal. Let's have a look at some pros and cons without getting too technical. The most important advantage is the way they handle clipping and distortion. When a solid state amp, also called transistor amp, is driven to the point it starts clipping a signal, or in other words, pushed to its limit, it starts to distort the signal in a very unpleasant way. Valve amps, on the other hand, are sort of meant to be pushed to the limit. Another advantage, which is more like a personal preference for some people, is that valve amps sound very warm and sweet compared to precise, eye detailed and colder sound of the solid state amps. There's one exception to this, and that's VFET amps. VFET is just another type of transistor such as MOSFET or bipolar. Without going too technical, VFET characteristics are very similar to those of valves. So, in a nutshell, VFET sound very similar to valves, warm and sweet, but keep the details and the crispness of the transistors. It's sort of the best of both worlds. Unfortunately, VFET transistors are no longer produced due to high cost, so the only VFET amps you can get are vintage ones. There are a couple of drawbacks owning a valve amp though. One of them is maintenance. Valves need to be changed regularly to keep the amp sound as it should, and they can get quite pricey. Transistors don't need to be changed to get the amp sound properly. Another minor drawback is a power output. Valve amps generally produce low power, so if you need an amp to drive some kind of large, power hungry or inefficient speakers, you need to get some sort of solid state. Speaking of solid state, when I said class A runs hot, it's even worse with valves. It's not a summertime amplifier, that's for sure. For those who just want to listen to music, the stereo is a must. Since pretty much every kind of music is recorded in stereo, there's no point in getting a multi-channel amplifier. And again, the more unnecessary stuff someone to put inside, the less quality you should expect. If you want your audio system for watching films, then 86 plus 5 speakers could be a good idea. For that, you don't need super high resolving amp with astonishing details and super warm sound. Just get some amplifier with lots of channels, set up your speakers around the room and get cracking. If you want to use your system for both, music and films, it's best to go for the stereo amplifier. I'm pretty much sure you're not missing on anything when watching a film in stereo. RCA connectors can be found on literally all amplifiers. It's a sort of basic way of connecting amplifier with your source. It's an analog type of connection with one problem. The problem with RCA cables is their shielding. Even if the cable is proper shielded, you may encounter a situation where the shielding is not enough and the signal carried over the cable can be distorted due to some interferences. And that's where the XLR comes in. XLR connectors can be found on more expensive amplifiers. It needs some additional hardware to decode the signal coming from a source. Again, without going too technical here, XLRs are constructed in a way the signal can be carried over very long distances while the interference can't affect it, to some extent. So if you need to connect your source by a cable that's 100 meters long or you've got a problem with interference, you just need the XLR, otherwise the RCA is perfectly fine for any use. Modern amplifiers can utilize digital inputs and outputs. You can connect your CD transport or any other digital source directly to your amp through SPDIF, Bluetooth, USB, etc. That however means the amplifier uses some sort of internal DAC to convert the digital signal to analog. If you feel the internal DAC is crap, you can always bypass it by getting an external DAC and connecting it through either RCA or XLR. I'll get to what the DAC is later on. Now a practical advice. Do not spend too much money on cables, it doesn't make any audible difference if you use cable for 1 quid or 1 million quid, it's just a piece of metal. What's rather important is shielding. I've made a video where I've tested 4 cables. The cheapest one cost 50p and the priciest one cost 1000 pounds. The conclusion was they all quote unquote sounded the same and the only difference was the level of shielding. The funny bit was the cable for 20 pounds had a better level of shielding than the more expensive cables. So don't spend your money on expensive cables, it's a scam. 
What is a DAC? It stands for Digital to Analog Converter. It's essentially a device that makes it possible to play music or other sounds from your computer or other digital sources. If you want to listen to music, streaming or otherwise, or you want to listen to me waffling on a computer or your phone, it's all thanks to some sort of DAC. You can find them either built in on the motherboard of your computer or phone, or in a form of a card in a slot in your computer, or as an external device connected for a USB, Bluetooth, etc. The ones on the motherboard can be found pretty much everywhere these days. They work, you can pretty much call them free, but they're far cry from good. You can find relatively inexpensive add-on cards that will make your system sound much better, and in my opinion, it's well worth it. The problem with internal cards is so-called computer arm. Since the computer is chock full of electronics, you may get some interference if the sound card is not properly shielded, and if you do, it's not very pleasing. And that's where external decks come in. They're connected through USB or some other type of digital connection to your rig, and that makes them pretty much isolated from the interference. You can find some cheap Chinese crap online, but those are usually even worse than the ones on the motherboard. They can also be quite pricey and from what I've heard, it's not worth spending these obscene amounts of money on them. And finally, you can find amplifiers with built-in decks. I've tested only one such amplifier, and the deck wasn't very good. That doesn't mean all built-in decks are crap, but I tend to go with separate deck. Like this, you can always upgrade by selling the old one and getting a better one. Now I know some of you won't agree with me on what I'm about to say, it's a little bit controversial, but I reckon it's the right thing to do. Well, I never use streaming services for a couple of reasons. I hate companies like Spotify, Tidal and similar bunch. And it's not about the quality they produce, it's rather about their approach to artists and even people they pay for their services. I understand they need to charge some fee to stay alive and prosper and to support the artists, but the word support is used very loosely here. For instance Spotify, they pay quite a laughable amount to the artist per download, it's about $0.0033. And I reckon the rest of the streaming services are on par with Spotify. Another reason why I hate these services is that small and independent artists that could actually profit from some sort of exposure on these services are excluded or suppressed compared to promoted crappy pop artists and record labels. It's quite a scummy way to do things. And now for the controversial bit. What I propose is to delete Spotify and just download slash pirate the music you fancy using Soulseek, Usenet or Torrent or whatever and if you like the music, just support the artists directly. Either by buying their music from their official website or using Subscribestar or buying their music on physical media. Anything, just don't put the money in pockets of streaming services and record labels where the actual artist gets practically nothing. And lastly, if you're a nerd and listen to game or anime soundtracks, you won't find anything like that on Spotify. Me personally, I wouldn't use a Casiva, since every Casiva will be most probably rubbish, unless you desperately like space and want everything in one package. They're very cheap to get, but that doesn't justify what you get for the money. I wouldn't want to use a receiver either, because I reckon nobody uses a tuner anymore, and again, I'd rather use some of the stuff in it. Don't get me wrong, there are excellent receivers that are really worth the money if you want to listen to radio or not, mainly vintage ones though. They're cheaper than integrated, and unlike integrated, modern receivers usually support multi-channel. If you're after the ultimate sound quality, integrated are still not for you. But they can still be quite brilliant and in some cases even better than some power amps. They usually cost more than receivers, but you're getting a better product. And finally, power amplifiers. They're usually most expensive of the bunch, and as such should sound the best. Expenses arise when you need to use more than one source, or your source is unable to control volume. You need to add a preamplifier to the equation then. Well, you can use power amp with multiple sources, but you'd be switching cables every time you'd want to switch to a different source. Moreover, excellent preamplifier can even make the sound better, so for the ultimate sound quality, a preamp is pretty much necessary. Regarding the classes, if you want class A amplifier, you just need to get some power amp. There are almost none class A integrated on the market, let alone receivers. They're generally most expensive, but if you're after the sound quality and money is not an obstacle for you, go for it. But is it worth paying top money for the top amp? Most probably not. I'm starting to be really annoying with this even to myself, but if you want the ultimate performance for a fraction of the price of the most expensive amplifiers, 
Get a V-Fat amplifier, there's nothing better for the price, for any price that is. And even though they're a lot cheaper than modern top-of-the-line amplifiers, they are far cry from cheap, so if you don't want to spend that much money on an amplifier, get some cheaper vintage integrated amp. They look amazing, they sound astonishing and they cost much less than new amplifiers, while performing better in many cases. If you like lots of details and ultra clear presence in the music and don't mind harsh and cold sounds, look for class D amps. If you've already got some loudspeakers and you're fond of them, you also need to choose an amplifier according to your loudspeaker specs. Take for instance my setup. I've got Infinity Carp on 9.2. These loudspeakers are quite power hungry and if I connect them to an amplifier that can't handle low impedances, the setup would either produce or able distorted sound or the amplifier could even give up and die. The easiest way to know if the amplifier can handle the speakers is to look at the specs. The most important bits are power, impedance and sensitivity. But more on that in the part about loudspeakers. And that's the video, it's already too bloody long, so I'll give you what I've chosen for my budget system and recommendation in a separate video, part 2.2 or something like that. Cheers.